what is going on everyone let me get my camera straight here and we will get rolling in just a second michael i got to turn my camera real quick yep and there we go all right what is going on everyone we are super excited to be with you guys tonight i'm gonna get me a little bit more light here michael and um i think i'm all set up here <laughs> so uh, michael can you hear me good yeah i can hear you can you hear me yeah can you hear me that's the main thing yeah yeah you sound loud and clear okay good well i had to hook up everything i've been out of town um unfortunately i've got some sad news to report um my dad passed away this past week so that is the reason why you guys have not seen a lot of me over um the last week or so um, my dad went in the hospital and he passed away on Sunday and uh, we're just getting back home um, just in the last few days. But um, again, I just uh, want to let you guys know that's the reason why you haven't seen me. And you guys know that I've been taking care of my dad um, really most of this last past year. And um, unfortunately, he he passed away. He was he was he would have been 87 in june so um i'm just real thankful that i got to spend the time with him and um, michael's on here too and thank you michael michael actually came to my dad's funeral on wednesday and um you know we he, i really appreciate him um being a part of that with me as well so again thank you guys for being so understanding and uh, we wanted to do a live stream tonight um, because I know a lot of you've been wondering where I've been, but that's where I've been. And uh, we got home yesterday and now we're going to do our live stream. Um, and I'm really sort of doing this live stream in his honor because he he loved that I went metal detecting. He loves history. He loves everything that I did. And so I, I want to continue on and uh, sort of, you know, carry his legacy uh, through these live streams and through my metal detecting adventures and so on. So again, thank you guys for all the condolences and um, the um, special words of thanks. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And um, again, that's where I've been, but we're going to continue on with our show tonight and super excited to have Michael in here with us. And um, Michael, Let's tell them we got a good show for them tonight, don't we? Yeah, there's a lot of good finds. We got some good information to share with everyone. Right. And, um, and go ahead, Michael. And folks, I, you know, it was the it was, you know, my honor to go down there. You know, Brian's father, he was a great man. You know, uh, he loved everyone. He was a, he was a really good man, and I I'm glad I got to meet him. You know beforehand and um it, it was an honor to go to his funeral it was and michael again i appreciate you being a part of it as well so uh, but we are going to carry on with our show tonight and again i appreciate each and every one of you being in here with us tonight um michael and i have had some we had some pretty good adventures last week or the week before last right michael right yeah week before um, last we had probably one of the best hunts that I've ever had. <laughs> Michael got to witness it. And uh, we were using the XP Deus 2, and we were using the fabulous sweeper program. That sweeper program performed very, very well, didn't it, Michael? Yeah, it did. Um, found a lot of stuff. Um, but we both found a lot of stuff. That oh, day. yeah. I mean, it was, it was just a, it was a killer day, one of the it best was. I've ever had. It was, and it was one of my best days ever. And Michael, I was glad Michael was a part of that with me. And um, those finds that we had together uh, were extremely. I mean, it was just something out of out of out of legends, wasn't it, Michael? It was. I, just, yeah. I couldn't believe it. And I and I've got a great video again, like you guys, like I just told you guys, I've been out of town. So um, I haven't had the chance or the opportunity to put together this video, um, but I got so tired of digging targets that eventually I stopped filming some of them, didn't I, Michael? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, there were so many button finds. I mean, you just, you know, you, you got tired of filming them, you know? 
Yeah. Uh, Chris says, hey, uh, he says, Matt, you bring in the kolaches tomorrow morning. So uh, I'm assuming Matt's on here. Um, but yeah, we've got we had so many finds on this last hunt and it was super, super fun. But one thing that um, I wanted to talk about and we're going to get to and I'm going to show some finds in just a few minutes. Um, but I wanted you guys to actually see um, okay, here's the a video. Hang on one second. Going. I'm going to stop that real quick. Um, but you guys can see up on the screen. I actually did some testing uh, today when I got back home. And what you're going to see in this video is you guys can see that there is two colonial nails. And that's hot glue on top of those colonial nails. And you'll notice that in the center is a mercury dime. So what we did was we took some of the best metal detectors on the market today and we did a separation test. That's why this live stream was called separation and iron test. And again, guys, just to make this clear, this is only one test. And um, this test is probably one of the hardest, don't you think, Michael? It is. It's uh I guess any machine that can can pass this test is, um, you know, it's a top tier machine. I would say. Right. So let me let me sort of set the stage so you guys will understand what we're going to show you guys. Um, what we did was we took the Manicore, we took the Deus II, we took the Rudus Versa, uh, we took the Equinox, we took the Legend. And what was the other machine, Michael? There's one more, isn't there? Or is it just five? Was that all five of them? Yeah. I did, let's see. Deus, Manicor, Rudis, Equinox, Equinox and, and Legend. Legend. Right. Yeah. So we took the five best machines that are out on the market today, and we ran them through this block test. Now, Ify Signals has done a test with a couple of these machines, but this test is set up a little bit different. And um, if you look see, at you if you look at what I'm showing, you will see there are two nails there. There are two colonial nails. And that is a mercury dime laying between those two colonial nails. And the nail on the left is elevated one and a half inches above the mercury dime. So this is probably one of the most realistic and one of the most well, it is to me one of the hardest tests that a machine would possibly see. Now, Michael and I hunt a lot of sites that are, oh my gosh, Michael, think ass cat. Thank you so, so much. That means a lot to me. And I appreciate that so, so much. Thank you again. Um, and we're going to show, I'm going to show you all these machines tonight. Uh, because I want you guys to sort of get a feel for what these machines are doing. But Stink Ass Cat, thank you so, so much uh, for that donation. That really, really, really means a lot to me. So thank you again. And again, your support for the channel goes straight back into the channel as well. So again, thank you. Thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate that. And that means a lot to me. So thank you, Stink Ass Cat. But to go back to explaining um the the setup here what this setup will show is it's going to show all of these machines on this test and how they perform and again it's one of the hardest tests that i can possibly come up with it's a realistic 3d elevated iron test and of course uh, you guys know uh, calabash was a good friend of mine and um, he used to do something similar to this but I wanted to show you guys what this test looked like and to show you all of these machines set up on this test. We've got the Manicore. We've got uh, the Rudis Versa. We've got uh, the XP Deus II. We've got the Mind Lab Equinox. And we have the Legend. And Michael, that's, what we showed on this test is pretty outstanding. Yeah, it's pretty eye-opening. I mean, it's... Uh... You know, maybe some of the machines you thought wouldn't do as well do really well and vice versa. I mean, it's just, um, and it, like I said, this 
this is a tough test for any machine. You know, that's why we, that's why we, you know, we run this test to test, especially when we get a new machine, you know, right. to see how it, how it performs. And, and Michael and I, I, I have, luckily I've, because of all the support that you guys have given me, I have the opportunity to have all of these machines. Um, we've got, we've got, again, the Manicore, the Deus 2, the Equinox, the Rudis Versa, the Legend. We've got all of those machines, and we're going to run them through this test. So real quick, I'm going to play this video for you guys, and then uh, we're going to get to showing some of the actual tests. So listen real quick, and then we're going to move on, okay? So here we go, Michael. This is basically explaining how this test was set up. Okay, here's the test that we're gonna be performing. You can see we got two colonial nails, that's hot glue that is around them. And we've got a mercury dime in the middle between these two colonial nails. Uh, the one nail is elevated one and a half inches above and the other nail is sitting right beside the mercury dime. So that is the test that we're gonna be using on these machines. Okay, so that was sort of explaining the test to you guys. So the first test that I'm going to show you is going to be with, I believe it is the Manicore first. So we're going to show you the Manicore test. Hang on one second before we start. So we're going to show you how the Manicore does on that particular test. Y'all listen to the sounds, look at the numbers, and this is the Manicore on this elevated nail 3D test. And we're going to take a look and then we'll talk about the Manicore on this test. So here we go with uh, the Mind Lab Manicore. So that was our first test with the Mind Lab Manicore. Michael, what did you think about that test? No, I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. You know, I mean, uh, you know, four, it was, you know, locking on, what, 40 to 42. And I know oh. that's not a uh, dime um, numbers. And it was giving a good tone, but you got to think about that. You know, if you got a machine that's giving a good tone and locking on, non ferrous numbers like that you're gonna dig it you right know? i mean and that, that's that, pretty impressive to me that was a no-brainer with the man right and and you guys just heard it and y'all saw it and that was the test that i performed with the manicore so now michael i've got uh another another test that Wait, we're going to do you want to tell them you know we were running the settings the right fire slam we, settings we were running what michael and i have put up on the channel it is our custom ferris limits with the mind lab manicore and i want you guys to see that because those settings are pure fire and i mean that honestly michael dug a beautiful civil war general service eagle button the other day using those settings and um, we think that those are the best, well, they're definitely the best settings for our area. And if you haven't checked out our custom Ferris Limits um, video, you need to go check that out uh, because that is pure fire. And um, you guys definitely, if you got a Manicore or you're using the Manicore or you got a friend that's got a Manicore, share that video with them. I think they'll find that to be really really good and michael have, and i have not found any weaknesses so far in those settings. adventure that's all terrain low conductor He's yes that's going to be general it was set yeah. on all terrain low conductors and michael thank you for um sharing that so let's look at the next one the next one is recovery going speed to, six <laughs> yes recovery speed yeah. six uh, we were using yeah. normal audio. We were using one region all tones. That's correct, right, Michael? Yeah. 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 So the next one is going to be, hang on, is going to be the Versa. 
So Michael and I have just recently gotten a Versa, a Rudis Versa. So if you don't know what that machine is, it's a machine that's made in Poland, uh, very, uh, very, very well known with European hunters, relic hunters. Um, it is a very good machine. And we wanted to show the Rudis Versa on this same test. So let's see how the Rudis Versa does, Michael. And uh, we're going to run this video on the Rudis Versa. So here you go, guys. Here's the Rudis Versa on our elevated nail test uh, with the Mercury Dime. So, Michael, what did you think about that test? Um, it didn't seem like it was done quite as well as the Mana Core. Like I said, it's a new machine. We, we, we've we been playing around with some settings on it. So, Oops. I just removed Michael. I didn't mean to. <laughs> He's probably going, what the heck are you doing? Sorry, Michael. That was me. <laughs> So yeah, that was oh, the okay. Rudis Versa. That was the Rudis Versa on that same test. And it didn't seem like it did as well. Now those tell everybody about those settings, Michael, real quick. Um I think on those settings we're running um what is it that we're running? Um we're running park. We're running sensitivity 22. We're running pole work. Right. Um, we're running, uh, uh, it was, there's a H, or sorry, a FH and an AFL. So right. That which is low frequency, lower frequency, uh, multi. Both of them are multi frequency. But this is the lower for the lower conductors. Um, let's see, recovery six. And uh, coin boost 25, and I think we had it said in that test that what seven yeah. uh, iron reject at seven and uh, bottle bottle cap rejection at 10, right? Right, so we had the coin boost set at 25, we had the iron reject set at seven, and we had the um, oh, Michael, I keep losing. We had the um, we had the bottle cap reject set at ten, so um, all of those things were things that we set up on the verse. We had custom we had custom ferrous, and then we went to six tones um, on that last one, and um, we set it up in that way. And if he gave us those settings, and if he signals, we used if he's pro program settings for that test, and if it sort of struggled a little bit, didn't it, Michael? Yeah, it did. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so it sort of struggled okay. a, a little bit with those settings. So um, the next test is going to be with the Deus 2. So let's listen to uh, the Deus 2 on that same. Hang on one second. We'll, we'll stop it real quick. Let's listen to the Deus 2 on that same test. Let's everybody hear. Let's let everybody hear this one, Michael. Here we go. Day is two on that same elevated nail test with the mercury dial. Notice the signal though, and the, the target ID. Now, you guys can hear, I'm sort of hovering over it at this point, but 
Notice the target ID. Wow, you your Wi-Fi on. Let's turn it off. So hopefully everybody saw the target ID at that point on that signal. And um, it did not, you know, tone-wise, it sounds pretty good. What do you guys think? Yes, it did seem better on Ify's test, but let me tell you why it seemed better on Ify's test. Ify was only using one nail on his test. So that's, that's partially the reason. I'm using two nails, which is definitely a, uh, a difference uh, in that case. So if he was only using two nails um, on his, and uh, we're going to, hopefully we don't lose anybody. Hang on one second. And I don't know what's going on with Michael tonight. So the number was 7980 on that Mercury dime. And um, that was what was showing up. And you guys can see it on this test. Um, you know, take it for what it's worth. This is only one test, and um, I just wanted to show these things to you guys because some of us sort of already have opinions about all of these machines. And again, this is only one test. You could probably come up with a bunch of other tests or different scenarios where one machine would outperform the other. To me, this is the hardest test that I could possibly come up with uh, using all of these machines. And I'm showing all of these machines with the best possible settings that I could possibly give. And so that's what you're seeing on these tests. And the Deus 2 on this test gave good target ID. Um, and the audio wasn't that bad either. Um, you guys saw the Versa and you saw the Manicore. So far, the Manicore seems like it gives better target ID and better audio on this particular test. That's not to say that the Manicore is better than the Deus 2 or better than the Versa or better than any of the, these other machines that I'm going to show you. But it is to say that on this particular test that the Manicore is performing slightly better than the Versa and the Deus 2 on this particular test. So let's bring Michael back in. Michael, we're glad to have you back with us. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, and it's like James just said, um, he says the Deus, Deus gives a decent tone, and that is the one that says dig me, even with the iron tones. Well, the Manicore did the same thing, though, too, James, and that's that's the thing we wanted yeah. to point out. The Versa, not, not as much. So, you know, we're going to look at a couple others, and then you guys can sort of see what I'm what I'm sort of getting at. So let's look at the next one, and we're going to – I'm going to have to download it, Michael. Uh, the next one was the one that I thought was one that was very, very interesting. <laughs> Hang on. This is the Equinox on the same test, okay? You guys can see the numbers the on the Equinox. Not. What's that, Michael? It's the 900, right? It is the Equinox 900. The silencer and the reactivity is what we use for our sweeper settings. So you guys know the silencer was at one. The reactivity was at three, I believe. It might have been at two and a half. But still, that's just to sort of give you guys an indication, test ridge digger. But this is the Equinox, same test, uh, recovery speed set at six. Uh, we're running in park two is what we're running at on this one with the Equinox 900. So let's take a look at the Equinox 900, and let's see how it does on this same elevated nail test. Yeah, Michael keeps running off on this. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that one, Michael? I mean, it's it sounds as good, you know, as the man accord to me, pretty close to it, and in the day as as well. I mean, you know, a lot of people don't think about the uh, the equinox for uh, 
relic hunting, the Equinox 900, but it's, it's a great machine. Yeah, let me and tell I, you, I, you know, and it's like I've been saying all along, um, you can take any of these machines and you're going to find something with them. And the difference between the Equinox versus the Versa versus the Manicore versus the Deus 2, it's pretty small, isn't it, Mike? Right. It, it, there's not a whole lot of difference, you know, between any of these machines, you know. No, there's just um, not. What it comes down to is, is the features, you know, the weight of the machine, you know, what you're looking for. And, and, and you know, other than the performance, because they're, they're pretty close. You know, They're very close, Michael. They are very, very close. And that, that's the one thing I want people to come across with or come away with tonight. Again, I'm lucky enough to have access to all of these machines and to be able to show you guys this one test and to sort of give you an idea about what these things could possibly be doing. But remember, like I said, this is one test under the settings and the conditions that I have put these machines under. It's not to say that one's outperforming the other. What it is to say is that with this particular test, that this is the results that we are seeing. So, um, yes, and Ben Box says, yeah, this is why you can't detect by target ID numbers alone, go by sounds, learn the sounds, and the machines will open up an entire new world. And Ben's right. You know, there are so many variables and so many things that you have to look at. Um, but, again, this is the one particular test that I've chosen to sort of help me sort of figure out and it's not to say that it's going to perform the same way in the ground as it does on this test. That's why I believe you've got to not only air test or, and do these types of tests, but you've also got to take these machines out and hunt with them as well. I think you've got to do both. Don't you, Michael? I think you do. Yeah, you got to do some tests like we're doing there. And then you actually got to, you got to get out there and hunt with the machine and see how it performs before you can draw any conclusions, you know? Right. Yeah. Before you make any conclusions, you got to do those types of things. So let's, let's look at the next one, Michael. The next one is going to be the legend. Let's look at the legend. And this one might be the one that, that sort of surprises some people. So let's look at the legend. Here's the legend multi three. What do you think about that one, Michael? That's, uh, you would dig that all day long. I mean, <laughs> I That's what I said, too. Yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't dig that one? <laughs> the legend sounds the best so far. That's right. Doug Atkins is right. Look, and you guys know, I am the biggest Stays 2 fan ever to walk the face of the earth. But I'm also a very, very honest person. I'm going to show exactly what i'm seeing and that machine sort of took me back a little bit it did it not just take you back a little bit michael it did it, it's surprising that's what i said earlier you know you, some of these machines on this test will you know surprise you you know you may think some are, are going to be uh do better on this test than others and, and and you know the legend for the price and everything it's I mean, that's it. Performs awesome, you know. Michael, to me, I'm just like everybody else. DCM says that that's a digger with the legend. And again, guys, that was set up on multi three. Everything was default on the legend. I did, I did not touch anything. I just put it in multi three. And that's all I did with it. I didn't do anything else. And it unmasked mm -hmm. that dime mixed in with those two square nails. And the legend was the one that that did um, the legend and the manicure really actually did the best on this test, other than the day is two, the Versa and the Equinox. I thought maybe third might have been the Equinox and then maybe fourth would have been the day is two. If I just based it off of this individual test, 
But again, it's only one test and it is a test outside of the ground. There are a lot of other variables that are out there, uh, but it, it was pretty eye opening to me seeing these things perform the way that they performed. Um, the legend was set up in multi three um, default settings. The day is two was set up with our sweeper settings. Um, the mana core was set up with our custom Ferris limits uh, based on um, uh, all terrain low conductors. Uh, the Versa was set up with a coin boost of 25, um, an iron reject of 10, the um, bottle cap reject of 10, and the recovery of six. The Equinox was set up with a recovery of six in part two. We didn't do anything else to that in the Equinox. Um, so that was it, guys. And that was a very, very hard test. Um, when I talked to Ify about it earlier, Ify was even saying, hey, I don't even do a test with a nail laying beside the target and a nail elevated above the target. And so that's probably more the scenario that Michael and I would see because of the situations and the sites that we hunt where we would have the multiple uh, iron targets laying around a non-ferrous target. And that's why I did it that way. And I've been using that test. That's how I test all of my machines to sort of help me determine uh, whether, you know, whether that's a machine that's going to really cut the mustard or not for me. And uh, you guys got to see five of the best machines that are out on the market today on that particular test. Michael, what can you add to that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, they're all really close. It comes down to the, uh, you know, the features, the feel of the machine, you know, when you decide on which machine to get and the price, you know. Um, but, you know, they're they're all really close in performance, and, and they are the top machines, I think, out there, the ones that you showed right now. Right. I mean, you know, I showed you guys the Manicore. I showed you all the Deus II. I showed y'all the Rudis Versa. I showed y'all the Equinox and I showed y'all the Legend. So those are five of the best machines out on the market on that one test based up on the best settings that I use um, to help hunt. And, you know, what does it mean? I really don't know, but, but what it means to me is it sort of shows me or gives me a snapshot of what it would be like if I did encounter that particular situation. Not that every situation is going to be like that. We all know that there are tons of variables. That's why a lot of us keep saying, Hey, I don't put a lot of stock in these air tests and the, the, you know, all of these tests where people are showing these things out of the ground. Um, but it, it can give you a general idea. Michael and I put a lot of stock into, into not only this, but we also put a lot of stock into what we see out in the field as well. And um, I think that's why we get some really good data based on those particular things versus um, just air test. Right, Michael? Right. You want to tell them about the one machine that you, you tried that you didn't, that you didn't film that, that passed that test? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you the other machine was the not the double score. The double score also passed that test. Now it wasn't as strong as the other five, um, right. but the not the double score definitely could hit that um, mercury dime between those two nails. Now it wasn't as loud and as crisp and as clear, but remember, there's no settings really to the not the double score. Other than you put it in multi, you know, you can run it with all iron. <laughs> That's basically it. There's not a ton of things you can do with the double score. Whereas with right. the legend, you can adjust some things. But I really didn't do that much with the legend. The legend did yeah. a lot of that on its own without me touching anything. And that was the default settings. So um, I thought you guys might find that to be interesting uh, for those of you that have any of those machines. And I don't know of any other channel that could have shown you guys all of those machines 
and shown y'all that particular test to give you an idea about what those machines are doing. I think not, like you said in the in the past live streams, not the they're they're right on the cusp. I mean they're and they're gonna come out with a, a machine in the future that I think's gonna I mean it's gonna be a, a great one. I mean really multi right. frequency because it's well uh, I'm not saying the the legend is not. It's it's a really good machine, but it's gonna be you know, it, it may be, you know, take the top spot their next machine. Well, Michael, you got to see me have the great one of the one of the best days of my metal detecting career last week. Right. Um, when we hunted together. And I was using the day as two. Again, guys, one thing I want to make this perfectly clear. Would those targets, all of these targets that I dug last week, would all of these other machines have hit? those same targets what do you think michael i think yeah i think most of them yeah they would you know right. it's all about walking over the target <laughs> you know right and you know and we can go into we can go into all the different settings hey you could have done this you could have done that you could have you know, we understand all of that that's not what we're trying to say here but what we are trying to say is under that test that I just showed using all these machines with the best possible settings that, you, that, that I can possibly come up with, that this is the results that we saw with that particular test. Now, would that have changed if it were in the ground? Yes. The answer is yes. Would it have hit those other targets in the ground? Yes, I believe that in some in some cases, there may have been one or two that might not have hit those targets. But we don't know. We don't know. All I can tell you guys is that we're living in special times with some really, really good equipment. Right. And all of these machines, you could take I could take the manicore and hunt an area and then I could go back to that same area with the day is two. And I guarantee you, I would find something else that I might have missed with the manicore. Does that mean the manicore didn't see it? Could be. It could be that I just didn't swing over it. Me and Michael have had this conversation quite frequently. I dug all those targets the other day, but that doesn't mean that Michael couldn't have found the same targets with the manicore um, walking behind me. It's, it's just that way. It's all about if you get your call over those things. Any of these machines are going to do well if you put it in the right site. Is that not true, Michael? That's true. It really is. Right. You just gotta you just gotta work the area and get that coal over the target. Most right. And a lot and of Dish Ridge Digger is saying, "Hey, I would have used the fast program." But let me tell you one thing about the fast program, Tesh Ridge Digger, that that Michael and I know, and Ify has pointed this out too. If you watch Ify Signals channel. You're going to get a lot of those seven, eight, nine signals. You're not going to get that regular ID, especially with that 0.71 filters on the day is two. I know that for a fact. Michael knows that for a fact. And you might have passed on some of those signals. Am I right, Michael? Yeah, you're right. You might yeah. have passed on some of the I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. And I've said this a hundred times. There is only one program on that machine right now that is going to give you the ID numbers that are going to be close to what that particular target is, and that is sensitive full tones. That's yeah. why the sweeper program has been so successful, because it's based off of sensitive full tones, and it's not running 0.71 filters. We've right, said that running, numerous times, haven't we, Michael? Yeah. All the other programs are running 0 0.71, but that one is running 1.0 filters. I promise you right now, Test Ridge Digger, if I was to take the day is two and I swung it over that same test, and I can show it. I'll be glad to make a video of it. But if I swing over that same test with another program on the day is two, what are going to be my ID numbers, Michael, that are going to pop up? 
Seven, eight, or nine. Seven, eight, or nine. It really will. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And if he's pointed that out too. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, and Doug Atkins is right. Having confidence in the machine in your hand makes a big difference too. And Michael, not Michael, what have I said about the day is too? Yeah, you con- you, that you got a lot of confidence in right. I do. I feel like I can take the day is two out and I can find anything I want to find with it when I have that machine in my hand. I feel confident with that machine. But I've done really well with these other machines too, haven't I, Michael? Yeah. Right. So it, That's right. you know, it, it's, it's you know, you can you can make that argument. But I've also done very well with the mana core. And again, a part of it has to do with sight. Part of it has to do with knowing how to set the machine up. Part of it has to do with swinging over the target. I mean, there are so many different things that we can go into. That's why, you know, you don't hear me saying, hey, this is the best machine ever. I'm not that guy. I believe in that all these machines are good. It's just a matter of knowing how to use them, setting them up, running them in the right location and uh, swinging over the target. That's just, that's just what it basically all boils down to. Right. Wisco says, but maybe, but in the ground, things are different. That's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. Wisco, you know, I can do all these air tests. That's why, Michael and I believe in doing not only the air test, but also taking these things out and hunting with them before we actually decide, hey, this is something that we know works. We're not going to tell anyone on here that something works until we've actually used it and, and run it and we're seeing success with it. Then we'll come and we'll say, hey, you know, you need to try this out or try that out. That's just the way we are. We're not going to we're not going to run an air test and say, oh, this is the greatest program ever built. We're not going to do that. And uh, hours of using it. It's hours of using it. I exactly. Mean, really, before we say anything. Right. Ben Box says, depends on the detector. It's a newbie, no. A skilled user, yes, with every machine. That's right. Ben Box, exactly right. Um, whatever machine or machines you use, I believe getting out in the field and putting in a lot of hours, that's it. That's what we're saying. Yep. DTM uh, makes a huge difference. Learn how it talks to you. Exactly. You guys, I mean, and you know, that's the good thing about our channel is that, um, we've got so many people on here that are very skilled and they understand these machines and they share a lot of great knowledge on here that's what makes our group so special and that's why i love getting on here with you guys every single night michael and i love it because we know that when we talk these things everyone on here understands what is going on and and they get what we're trying to come across with and so on so it really makes it special and that's why this group is a very very special group thank you guys so so much for all of your input and all of your support um ben box says i run sensitive full tones and all metal it's like putting the day is two on steroids learning by sound not id numbers that's right you know there was one thing too that michael and i were talking about today um the sound and the audio really is awesome and that really tells us to dig or not dig in a lot of situations but one thing i can say that the manacore does and if you paid attention to the video you would have seen the same thing is that manacore showed all three of those targets did it not michael it did it showed both nails and the dime so i mean if you're a person that is a visual person and you know you want to be able to get a little more information or a little more data the manacore definitely does what my lab promised and we saw that in that video, if you paid attention, and uh, the manacore is definitely doing that. It, it showed us all three of those targets, the two nails and the dime. And the way Michael and I had the ferris limit set up on the manacore, actually, you could see that the nails were in the upper ferris limits. And you could see that the dime was just below those ferris limits. 
And Michael, that's pretty crazy to think about that we got that so close to being exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Pretty cool. Man. Thank you, Dig and Daryl. Thank you so, so much. Um, and by the way, there's our main man, Joel. Joel, I apologize. This was, I just got back and, and I don't know that you know this. My dad passed away, but anyway, we just got back and we decided to do the live stream. We had a couple of people asking us about it. So we got on to do the live stream. Michael and I did tonight, but um, again, we're talking about the Manicore. We showed some great tests, so go back and check it out. But yes, we got some great, great information on here for you guys. Uh, NC Loss Relic Recovery, glad to have you back in here with us tonight. Um, Gary says, hey, Brian, have you hunted with the Versa and how did it perform? Guys, I have hunted with the Versa and it performed excellent. I love the audio on that machine. It runs really smooth in the iron. I've run Ify's program. Michael and I are working on a program for the Versa as well um, that we're trying to figure out what it, where it's going to fit in in all of this. But um, I like the Versa. I think it's going to be a great machine. Unfortunately, though, you can't get it here in the United States. So um, that's an issue. But the Versa does run extremely well in iron. And I like the audio. What do you think about the Versa, Michael? I'm, I'm with you. I like the audio. It, it has really good. It has audio, I think, this similar or maybe even a little bit better than the Manicore, you know, the Mind Lab tones. And, uh, right, right. It does run. It runs quiet in the air. Yeah, it's really a smooth running machine. It runs very, very smooth. And Michael and I were talking about it today when I was testing how the audio is just it's killer, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Doug Atkins says, some days you are the windshield and some days you are the bug. And that's exactly true. <laughs> I mean, there's some days you're, you're dead on and some days you're not. And it's just like anything else. Um, but having the right equipment and knowing how to use that equipment, that plays a big role into it and being on a good site. And luckily, I've been blessed with being on a really, really good site as of late. So, um yeah, Doug is exactly right. Gene Gilstrap says, I really like my days too. However, I see so many legend hunts, which makes me think a little bit. Well, God, you just saw that legend video. Was that not, I mean, that thing was smacking that dime. Um, and it sounded so good. Did it not, Michael? It did. I mean, it's that's impressive. Uh, and, you know, I was really surprised to see that. Um, it done as good as any of those machines. It did. It did. You know, and I know some people were going to say, hey, well, the, the legend's only 500 and something bucks or $600 or whatever it may be. But like I've been saying all along, the legend is a good machine, guys. Don't discount that machine. Now, I will install the beast mode, but you know what? I'm going to wait till the beta version's done. I'm not going to fool around with it. I want to see it, what it's like at its true potential. And um, so I'm going to wait before I actually make a video with the beast mode and the deep seeking uh, program that they're going to put on the legend. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to let everybody else deal with the bugs. I'm going to wait on the legend. But you guys just saw the legend on with the 11 inch coil on that same test and how well it performed. So it really did well. Um, Wisco Detect says, well, that's the little things with experience running the days to you understand the sounds of the ground with enough time. And that's so, so true. Metal detecting with Texas, not me. I'm still learning half the time. I'm as lost as last year's Easter egg. <laughs> well, Hey, and again, all of this takes time, takes a lot of hours using these machines. Michael, I'm not proficient with the Versa, you know, but I'm trying to get that way. And um, I hope to get that way with the Versa. But um, right now, you know, I'm learning that machine. And who knows, maybe I'll come up with something that works really, really good with the Versa. Um, but again, we saw the Manicore, we saw the Equinox, we saw the Deus II, we saw the Legend. All of those machines are perfectly capable of unmasking targets in Colonial Iron, which is what you just saw. So, um, you know, you guys can make your choice 
but they're all excellent machines. And I think Michael would agree with me. Gene Gilshap says, I also had no idea on the day as two that all but sensitive full tones are running this. That's right. And that's what I just said a few minutes ago. Um, Tesh Ridge Digger was saying run fast in 0.71. But the problem with that is that I'm running in 0.71 is going to give you that 789 on the ID if you're a screen watcher. If you're not a screen watcher and you can rotate around that target a little bit and it still stays at that, you might dig it. But a lot of people get turned off by the ID and they'll walk away from that because they think it's a piece of iron, especially when it's ringing up 789. So um, Sensitive Full Tones is the only program on the Days 2 right now that is running the 1.0 filters. And that makes a difference on that program. And that's why Michael and I choose to use that program with the Sweeper program, uh, because it, it just works and it gives you accurate ID numbers as well. Right, Michael? That's right. And, you know, like uh, Joel was saying, for five ninety five, you can get the ledge and it comes with a free six-inch coil. That's a good deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, The I mean, honestly, you know, for the price, Legend is just a, it's just a heck of a machine, guys. And I'm, right. I'm not just saying that. I mean, I've used it. I've used it out on the beach. You guys just saw it in a separation test. Um, you know, when it gets in the ground, it may work a little bit differently, but it sort of gives you an idea about what that machine is capable of. And um, the Legend's not a bad machine, not at all, guys. I would, I'd highly recommend the Legend. Um, and the double score, if you're, you're somebody on here that's sort of just starting out and you want to spend less than $500 for a decent machine or a good machine, check out the double score. The not the double score is a really, really good machine. Um, and again, Metal Detect in Texas says um, he's trying to learn, and he said that's why I'm here. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to disseminate information that's accurate and information that you guys can use. Uh, Gary says, I ordered the Versa from Europe, and they wouldn't ship to Canada, so I had it shipped to a buddy in Europe, and he's bringing it to me in a couple of months in his carry-on. So can't wait to get it. You're going to enjoy that machine. I can honestly tell you that, Gary. And um, I, um, I've got the chance to use it. I've had some great, great finds with it. Uh, the one hunt that I got to use it in, and um, I was really impressed with it. It is very smooth and iron, and it's got great audio on the Versa. So I think you'll enjoy it. And um, it's right up there with all these other machines. I mean, it's right in that same category. It's built very solid. The shaft is very nice. Um, I like the screen. Um, I like the features of the screen. It has a thing called dual mode where you can actually um, sort of assess the size of the target, um, sort of like having your pinpointing feature on uh, the whole time and so on. But it is it is an excellent, excellent machine. So, Michael, we got a lot of comments. Ricky Bennett says, Beta Beast is a dud, in my honest opinion, needs work. Right, and that's why I said I'm not going to mess with it until I know that they're finished with the beta testing. Um, I don't want to have to keep installing um, the update on that machine um, once they get it figured out. And not just really good. They'll listen to the customers. They'll listen to what they're getting from uh, everyone out there. And then hopefully they can fix it and remedy it and get it, maybe work it even better. But I'm going to wait, and Michael and I talked about this today. I'm going to wait until I install that um, that Beast program as well. Um, Gary says, also got the Stev Detector Carbon Fiber for Deus 2 with RC Digs remote case. It is super sweet. Sounds like it. So let's see what else. We got a lot of good stuff. Don't tread on me, says the only test that matters is what's in your mouth. Oh, well, nothing else counts. Day is two rules, right? Well, y'all saw my pouch the other day, but I'll just show you what my pouch gave me with the day is two. Michael, I've got them right here. <laughs> I've still got them in the box, guys. This was uh, this was one day's hunt. 
if you guys can can see that or not. That was one day. There was a lot of King Georges in there, by the way. And this was the other day's hunt. And you guys can, can see all of that all in there. And all that was dug with the days, too. It was a great day, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And so, you know, that's so true. Don't tread on me. Um, let's let's see if we got – let's look at that. I think it's in here. Yes, there it is. I can't get a good close-up shot of it, though, Michael. But there's the um, – there's the real – that I dug, guys. You guys can sort of see it. And then we got... It was 1807, right? It was 1807. There's a King George, and I know this camera's not doing it justice. And we got another... There's another... Another King George that we dug. Uh, probably my favorite find of the day, though, other than the Real. The Real was awesome. But was this piece of colonial coin silver? And look at that. It's a little heart and it's got an A and an S on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. That was one of the first nice targets that I dug, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah. Daryl asked what machine I was using. I was using the Manicore most of the time. And yeah, but my, Brian, Michael had a Brian good day got, too. Yeah, he's got my button somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I Michael, had a, Mike, Michael had a very, very good day. Um, so uh, Joel's on here. If you, if you guys are interested in the legend, you can hit Joel up, and we'll um, let's run his thing across the bottom here. Um, there's Joel's contact information. Um, if you're looking for the legend, he's got it for $5.95. It comes with a free six-inch coil. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, for yeah. the legend. So if you are interested in a legend, maybe it's a backup machine or maybe it's your first machine, Joel can get you hooked up uh, with a legend. Um, and Gary says the legend's great, just don't like the feel of it. Menu is terrible, but just my opinion. Right. And it, it can feel a little heavy, but again, the features on that machine are just unbelievable. And Ben Boggs says, yes, the takers are like cars. Everyone has their preferences and expectations. That's true. So true. Joel says that you can get a double score, 469 for the double score, double score, and it comes with a free AccuPoint pin pointer. So, again, another great machine. I like the double score. In fact, I plan on using the double score on the beach a good bit this summer. Um, I'm really, really, really loving the way that that machine performs. Um, so again, the double score, great machine. Joel says 469 with a free AccuPoint pinpointer. That AccuPoint pinpointer is $149. So that's a good deal. What do you think about the double score, Michael? I'm impressed with it from what I've, I've seen on your test that you've ran and uh, you've hunted with it a few times and it seems like a solid machine. It is a solid machine. If I had to pick a beginning machine or machine that I would sort of an intermediate machine, that would be the one that I would go with, especially with it being multi-frequency, being able to hunt on the beach, uh, the features, it's just loaded with features. So the double score is a good one. Don't tread on me. He says I swing the day as two at least twenty hours a week and still learning the tones. Whatever machine you use, stick with the one machine, or you're wasting your time. And it does take a while to learn machines, but you know most of these machines have the same. They have the same terminology, and if you learn them, you know you can pick up a lot of these machines. Now it does take a while to get used to tones and that kind of stuff, but you can pick up a lot of these machines and get out and start finding things. Workman's Adventure says, I used the Manicore for a while before I felt I, before I felt I knew it could. Right. And I'm telling you, the Manicore is a solid machine. Um, I had to pretty much almost whip Michael just to get him to buy one, and he finally bought one, and um, he loves it. Don't you, Michael? Yeah. 
I really like using that machine. Right, it's, right. It's got great tones, and uh, it's it's got a awesome uh, user interface on it. You know, it's easy to follow. Right, it is, it is, and the Manicore is just. I like the audio on the Manicore. I like uh, yeah. the user interface on the Manicore. Um, I like the screen, you know, just like I just said, you know, if you paid attention to that test, you saw three targets on that screen, the two nails and the mercury dime. I mean, that's a lot of data and a lot of information that you can use out in the field. If you're sort of one of those people that likes to watch the screen, then that'll tell you a dig or not dig situation. So you're not wasting your time. You know, you can look at it all kinds of ways, but it, it does sort of help. Don't tread on me. Colonial silver, nothing else like it. That's true, too. Relics and Rings says nice finds. It was. It was a fantastic day. Um, I, I think I showed you guys, um, but I dug a Virginia Colonial half penny uh, last week, too, which is a very, very rare <laughs> coin. And um, I've been very fortunate um, when I dug that as well. I also dug with the Deus Two and the Sweeper program. Um Ricky Bivett says, I volunteer to go with y'all and dig for you. <laughs> yeah, Ricky, it's a beautiful place. That place we got right now, Michael, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. It really is. Yeah. It's, you know, it's it's a beautiful place. A uh, lot of land there, a lot of unexplored places that we haven't checked out yet. No, we've got a lot of more great adventures coming from that place. So we're super excited. Ben Box says, that was a love token, definitely. Ben Boggs says, I got a trim someone turned into a love token, found it in the Chicago park about six inches deep with the day is two. Right. Um, Metal Detecting Texas says, I found a heart just like that in Hallettsville, Texas, a few weeks ago. Was yours really thin? It was really, really thin, and it came off of a 1700 site. So, um, yeah, and the S on it is backwards, guys. That's what made it so, so special. Um, don't tread on me, says Joel. Can you get that box Gary had in his video for the controller and a GoPro? Um, Joel can answer that question, um, but I'm sure he can. Fly Rock or Joel says, or basic score comes with an AccuPoint too. If you're interested in the regular score, uh, you can get that with an AccuPoint for $425. Uh, Wisco to Texas, don't tread on me. I 100% agree. Once you learn that machine, there's nothing else better out there. That trumps the one you're using. Stick with it, and you'll understand why the Day S2 is the best. And the Day S2 is a great machine. Guys, y'all know that I love the Day S2. I've been using it for a while. <laughs> All The Day S2 and the Day S1, they're both excellent machines. XP does a great and fantastic job. We're just saying that there are a lot of other machines that are out there that are pretty equal. I mean, they're very close, definitely. Um, Gary says, yes, Manicore screen and menu is awesome. He says he agrees with us. Uh, don't tread on me. He says, I only use full tones, square high tones, so subtle and com complete spectrum. Human ears are struggling to keep up. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, I like square high tones. I love that as well. Um, let's go to Texas. I've been, I've never been happy with the days too, and I don't work for them. It's just my opinion. Right. And, and neither do I, I don't really work for XP as well, but again, there are a lot of great machines that are on the market right now. Um, Michael looks like a pretty big old boy. You think you can whip him? <laughs> no. <laughs> Michael is six five, guys. I'm five seven, maybe <laughs> on a good day. So Michael's a, Michael's a tall, tall, tall dude for sure. But one of the friendliest and nicest people you'd ever want to meet, Michael is. He's like a big teddy bear, um, right? And Doug Atkins says yes. It's nice to have different machines to fit different budgets, and that's why I do what I do. I try to show all of it so you guys can have an idea, um, because there's a lot of people out there that may not have may not have the money for manacle, or they may just not be interested in spending that kind of money on a manacle. That's why we try to show as many things as we can. Uh, Cody Lovelace says, "Do you have a veteran discount for joining your channel?" <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't have a venture discount, but I bet Joel does if you're interested in buying the machine. Yeah. But um, yeah, check out if you are interested in joining the channel, if you're interested in the membership, we do have the membership program, which we will be doing a live stream this month in April um, specifically for our members. And uh, that gives you access to special giveaways. It gives you a special badge and you get access to that once uh, once a month live stream where you guys have complete access to Michael and I. And uh, we try to answer as many questions as we can. And we usually have some sort of special content that we only do for those members. So if you are interested in that, you can join uh, the membership. The membership is uh it's 10 bucks. You don't have to join. We're still going to do our regular live streams with you guys weekly, uh, but it does give you some, some special perks just for joining. If you are interested and we would greatly appreciate it. It just supports the channel, provides the adventures, the cameras. I just did my taxes uh, today. So it was amazing how much money I've actually spent on metal detecting and cameras and gear. Michael knows the amount actually. So uh, it was it was a good bit of money um, that I had to spend to do all this. Um, let's see here. Don't tread on me. It says I've been using zero reactivity a lot lately. It takes a lot of patience, but if it's slow way down, you keep hitting the iron patches, it will lock on. I'm sure it will because even at zero or even at one, the XP Davis two is a pretty fast machine, isn't it, Mike? It is. It, yeah, it's fast for them. Like you said, zero or one is faster than a lot of machines on the market. Oh my God, it is. It definitely yeah. is. So it is, um, it's really, really, really fast, even when you run it really, really low. So again, you know, check, you know, run it a little bit lower. If you're on, if you're on a site and you want to hit really deep, lower the reactivity down, bump the sensitivity up, set it up in the sweeper program, and go to town, you know. No telling what you'll find for sure. Uh, Dig and Daryl says, Richard Smart joined the membership this week. And I thank you, Dig and Daryl, for referring him over. We'll definitely look out for him. And um, Michael and I will have a special live stream for our members uh, this month, month of April. And uh, we're going to have, um, hopefully we'll have something really cool that everyone can take away and benefit from. Um, Wisco to Texas, I'm looking forward to using my new legend this summer. From what I've heard, it's the best bang for the buck and incredible detector. I traded my Knox 800 for it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I think it's going to be very similar to what you have with the Knox 800. Um, maybe with this beast mode, I think it will do well. Um, it separates very well, uh, which I showed in that video, Wisco, if you saw it. But um, it definitely separated very well on that iron test that I did with the elevated nails. So. I don't think you're going to be disappointed at all. There's a lot of great features, features that you didn't have on your 800. So I think you're going to enjoy that machine quite thoroughly. And um, let let not to know that, you know, you sort of heard about the legend on here. So they know that I'm not just talking about one machine over another <laughs> because that's they, they like to hear that. Um don't tread on me. I actually really good at picking mid-tones and iron as well. Very good. Yes. Uh, Aaron Solomon said, just thought of this. Would using bags of topsoil and air tests make a difference? It could, you know, but again, it just sort of gives you a general idea. I would never, ever, ever base my sole decision on a detector based on an air test. I just want. How about you, Michael? No, you got to get out in the field and hunt with it and see how it performs in different uh, scenarios and uh, soils. And it just, you know, it takes some time to uh, to see how a machine performs and adjust your settings as well to, right. to those uh, to those sites. Um, Bill Me says, there's a lot of good machines on the market now, but none is in the class of the day as two. I beach hunt 90%. I pull some deep targets. This machine is a beast in sand and soil. Look, you're not going to get any argument from me at all. I love the day as two. I just showed you a whole pocket full of finds. I mean, uh, some finds that people would haven't dug in a lifetime. I dug in the last week using the day as two. So 
I love the Deus 2. I've always been a big Deus 2 fan, and I'm going to continue to use the XP Deus 2. We're here to provide as much information as we can, not only about the Deus 2, but about all the other machines as well. XP makes a fantastic machine, and I've been very, very lucky to be in association with XP. And um, I can tell you they've got some good things coming down the pipeline as well. So stay tuned for that from XP and um, all of these companies. They're all, they're jockeying, they're competing. And um, that's what's good for us when they compete against each other because they're trying to strive to make a machine that will outdo the other. And that only benefits all of us. Uh, and that's the truth. Uh, Ricky Bennett says, Wisco to Tech, I love my legend. I think you will like it too. Yes, Ricky Bennett's dead on. Hoping to see either a frequency raising software update with a new small coil. I'm hoping to see that too. Don't tread on me. And hopefully it's coming very, very, very soon. Ben Box says, air tests are good for marketing, but a test bed will tell you the truth real fast. Right. And that's why Michael and I keep saying, don't just base your opinion off of a, an air test. We showed these tests tonight, um, but that doesn't mean that's the end all to be all. Like I kept saying, that's only one test. There are so many other variables that are involved um, when using the machine and seeing if a machine sort of lives up to the hype and the marketing and all those other things. Uh, you got to take it out and hunt with it. And you got to, you know, if you got a, 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 a test garden, that's great too. But even a test garden, sometimes not going to show you the true picture because it only shows you one snapshot of what that machine can do. It's not going to show you every single possible scenario. It's just not. You got to hunt with it, run it through a test garden, do some air testing, you know, let your ears be the judge, let your eyes be the judge, how it feels. I mean, there's so many things that go into picking the best machine for you. And, um, like I said, the Deus 2 has always been, to me, the best machine for me. But these other machines are equally capable of, of running right along with that Deus 2 as well, for sure. Uh, don't tread on me. I got hop in the shower, get some sleep, hit the woods. Good luck tomorrow. Don't tread on me. And um, Good luck. Yeah, definitely. Hope you find a lot of goodies tomorrow. Um, Michael, I got some fines. Let's see if I can pull these fines up real quick and show to everyone. And I hope that I have. Yes, Doug, Doug Atkins is right. There are too many variables to base anything off a of simple test at home. You have to do some real life. That's right. That's what Michael and I are saying. Um, this was just to give you sort of an indication of what it looks like under one particular test. That's not to say that one doesn't outperform the other in another type of test or another situation, because we all know that that's true. Somebody can go out there right now and set up another test. that looks identical to mine and it might show that another machine is doing better. Um, but what does that mean? <laughs> it just means that it's good. If it, everything was set up that exact same way in that exact same test, that's all it means. So, uh, but you're exactly right. Um, let's see, Michael, let me see if I can pull these, these fonts. Yes, thank you, Doug. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide the best possible information that we can provide to you guys and sort of show you a little bit about all of these different machines. And um, so Matt Johnson just sent me that tarp, Michael, by the way. So this was from... Michael Workman. The Guys, heart that he dug. Yes, the heart that he dug. So um, hang on one second here. I'm going to share. Um, let's share that. This was from Michael Workman, who's on here right now. Let's show, uh, let's show his find that he had, if I can pull that up. It's not going to let me. Let's, let's do this. So present. There it is. There it is. Okay. Let's look at, um, 
Let's look at that fine if I can. That's not working. Hang on one second, Michael. Let's go stop screen. I want to share this fine if I can make it show. Not going to like me. All right. Well, and my other screen is not working. All right, we might have to do the fines next week. Guys, I apologize. But Michael found a beautiful U.S. belt plate. That was one of the fines I wanted to show. And I've got a couple of others. I think Greg, who's on here right now, sent me some, some nice fines. I'll put that together in a um, PowerPoint, and we'll feature that. Michael, don't let me forget. We'll feature that on the next live stream and show those fines. I was going to try to pull them from my email and uh, let you guys see, but um, this thing's not cooperating uh, the way I would like for it to. So, but anyway, we'll we'll do that next time. Thank you, Gary Ann. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, we got a couple of more comments. We'll answer those, and then we're going to sign off here. We've been on here for an hour and twenty. Um, Gary says, "I wonder in the future what the Manicore Two D screen will would be with the updates." I think it holds a lot of potential. And Michael and I actually had that conversation today, didn't we, Michael? Yeah, we sure did. Right. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see that. I, I'm sure there's some updates down the road for Manicore, the Deus 2. You know, there's a beta for the uh, Legend right now. So Right. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. And we've also got – we also got the Garrett. Look at there. I got my Garrett hat on tonight, Michael. Yeah, the Garrett Storm. The Garrett Storm. Storm. So there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline, and you guys, we're hoping to be able to bring you all of that information. One thing, too, that Michael and I talked about um, was um, the Manicore and the sensitivity and how, you know, they've got all of this sensitivity and um, – you know, where's that going to go? Because you got 35 levels of sensitivity, but you can't run it that high anyway. So right. where's that going to go? You know, so it must mean that they've got something else in mind on down the road. And that'll be interesting to see uh, as well. Um, thank you, Gary, for the kind words. We really, really, really appreciate it. And um, guys, I think that's it. We've been on here for an hour and 20. And I know Michael's probably ready to get off. <laughs> but Hopefully you got some information that you can use. Hopefully those um, little test videos that I showed will help you, um, you know, at looking at these machines and maybe setting up these machines um, and so on. So we, we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff coming uh, in the near future to help you guys out and to get you guys rolling beach seasons coming up for those of you that are beach detectors i'll be out on the beach uh, michael and i are going to be doing some relic hunting um, probably in the next month or so before it gets too hot and uh, we've got that great permission that we've been talking about so uh, we're going to have a ball out there we've got some great video content coming up in the near future if you haven't hit the like and follow button or subscribe button please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. Share the channel with your friends. Um, the more people come on here, comment, show up for these live streams, the better off we are uh, in doing that. Thank you again to uh, Stink Ass Cat for his generous donation of $300. That, that was super, super nice. And uh, we really appreciate that. And hopefully he got some information from this tonight. And uh, we really appreciate him uh, doing that. And um, we are um, super excited to have him as a great supporter to our channel. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. And look, it makes us all think that we're passing on good stuff. But again, it's like I said earlier, it's just a matter of putting the coal over it in a lot of cases. And Michael and I yeah. have had that conversation uh, quite often. You know, you got to put the coal over it. These machines can do a lot for you, but ultimately it's going to come down to you, the user, ultimately. Um, it's like uh, I used to play a lot of golf. I don't play as much as I used to, um, but it, a, an old gentleman used to come in the store that I worked in because they used to sell golf clubs, believe it or not, in a pro shop. 
And he used to come in and he would tell me, he'd say, son, it, it, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. And I've always, <laughs> I've always believed that from there on in, you know, because you could buy the best golf clubs in the world. The same way with metal detectors. You can buy the best metal detector in the world. But ultimately, right. well, yeah. you know, a lot back. of the targets, you know, you can you can come at it from a different direction and you'll hear it where, you know, that you didn't hear it, you know, on a previous pass, you know. So it pays to kind of grid an area out, come at it in different directions, you know, especially if you're handing a lot of iron, you know. Yeah. Gary says, stink ass cat ain't that stinky. No, he's not. He's <laughs> a super, super supporter of this channel, and we appreciate him so much. Ben Box says, great show. Thanks to everyone. Learn something new every show, and that's what it's about. That's why Michael and I do what we do, so we appreciate you guys so much. Dig and Daryl, appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Have a great, great weekend. Um, yes, I know that what an air test is. I'm a semi-driver, and I start thinking that I was testing y'all's brakes. Yes. <laughs> uh, work Mr. Denture says, I have dug all targets all around that belt plate before. Yeah, we're going to get that up and show that. Um, I'll get the uh, PowerPoint filled in with our finds, and hopefully we'll have a lot of finds. I've only got like three or four that have sent. If you are interested in sending finds before we head out, uh, if you got something you would like for us to show on the next live stream, sranc at gmail.com, and uh, I will be glad to get those finds on a uh, presentation, and we'll show those finds and give some special shout-outs to those people as well. But thank you again uh, so, so much. DC Diggins says, I like the spiral method for hitting targets at different angles. You and I both, that's what Michael and I use. Uh, Bobby Short says, yeah, I agree. The angle of attack is important. That's true. So, so much. Thank you, Gary. We appreciate it. Hopefully you guys got something from the live stream. I'm glad we were able to do it. Um, glad Michael talked me into doing it. And so um, you guys have a wonderful and fantastic weekend. Michael, any parting words before we head out? Have a good weekend, guys, and uh, find something good. So we maybe we'll just have a uh, fine, fine show. show yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can so do that. Then. Up, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, this was sort of last minute, so I didn't get a chance to sort of prepare all of them. But uh, we will have a great fine show coming up. Right. And, I um, love looking at fine, so that'll be a good one. Yeah, Damian Thorne says time to – yeah, Damian, you don't want to miss the first part, especially the first part of this with um, the test videos that we showed with all the different machines. It was it was pretty impressive for sure. Yeah, it was. Okay, guys. Well, look, you guys have a wonderful, fantastic weekend. Go find some great and amazing stuff. And Michael and I will be back with you guys next Friday night um 7 30 regular time hopefully and um you guys are super we appreciate your support we appreciate you being here tonight spending the time with us on a friday night and um again share the channel hit that like button if you haven't already greatly helps me out helps michael out and helps the channel so definitely do that before you leave and um Check out the, the content that is coming. I've got a few hunts that I have not put up yet. I've got like three. I'm about three hunts behind at this point. So uh, we've got more great hunts and more great targets and ventures and all kinds of things that we've done over the last month. So all that stuff's coming real soon. So you guys take care. Have a wonderful, restful weekend. Enjoy your time with your family and friends. And get out there and find some amazing things and share them with us, too, if you get a chance. We'll catch you guys real soon, and we'll see you on our next adventure. Take care, guys. Have a great and wonderful night. Thank you all so much for Have being here. Have a good night, guys. Right. Take care.